my name is Naim Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. So my name is Sam. I'm calling you down from uh, Adelaide in Australia. And uh, yeah, we run a program called Succeed down here in all high schools. So I really appreciate you having me on, man. Definitely. So let's talk about this. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, one of the things that they like to do is to go back in time and give some advice to themselves when they were younger so maybe other individuals could learn from their mistakes. What would be some of the advices that you're giving to the younger generation as far as what you got to do for their lives? Yeah, so I think a big one for me would be don't worry too much about what other people think of you and uh, we don't, you don't have to impress everybody. You know, once you know, once you learn to discover and explore who you are and what your values are, um, you will attract the right people to surround you. Where I spent most of my life, my teen life, trying to impress everybody, getting myself in lots of trouble to try to be that guy. And, um, and then once you sort of stand firm with who you are and what, what you believe in, the right people will, will slowly, you know, they call it law of attraction. I, I, yeah. So you attract the right people to you once you are uh, uh, aligned with what you believe and your values. Yeah, definitely. So don't be too worried about what other people think and find out what you stand for very early in life. That's How is that suggest. different from positive feedback or positive criticism? How, how do you differentiate the two? Because I hear a lot of people say, don't give a shit what everybody say. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah, not talking see, about I'm, that side. I'm mm, talking about the positive mm. side. How do you turn into that a positive way? Yeah, so I have a bit of a difference with that. So it's not that I don't give a shit about what anybody says. It's that I am, I am careful about who I give a shit about what they say. So if it's like my peers and they're just like, oh, yeah, you should do this. Oh, yeah, what, well, I can't believe you're doing that. Or, you know, but if it's somebody that I look up to and I respect and they say, hey, Sam, I've noticed, you know, you've been going a bit off the path and, you know, you've got much potential. You know, you could be doing this. I'm going to take that on board. If it's some random idiot that's telling me I'm an idiot, then I'll be like, no problem, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know? Big difference. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to determine who it comes from and how I take it on. But the problem is we live in a world that's, you know, like, for example, you know, uh, mad, mad respect. Molly, uh, Miley asked, what's your, what's your name, brother? My name is Vahid. V-A-H-I-D. Vahid. 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 So, Vahid, you have 300,000 followers on this social media platform, right? Imagine every single one was trying to give you advice. Yeah, that ain't going to work. Well, I hope right. that that happens. At least I, I see that they're alive and they, they message someone. So that's yeah. cool. At least they want yeah, something cool. positive and they got 100%. feedback. But exactly. It will be very confusing. And you yeah. don't have to get it right every single time either. We're still a Definitely human being. We could, we could mess up and, and learn. 100%. And I think as a country, as a world right now, we're finding out that there are some companies and some presidents and some authorities are holding themselves to a higher standard. They're saying, listen, we messed up. We need to go back. And I have respect mm. for them. I'm like, listen, they're admitting it. Just don't make mm. the same mistake, the stupid mistake twice. As long mm. as you don't do that, I'm okay. But mm. being able to have that kind of a self-awareness to recognize mm. that you made a mistake, you admit it, and you're trying to. And that's why they say there's three steps to an I'm sorry. First, you recognize it, then you admit right. it, then you're like, listen, how can I make it up to you? How can yeah. I go fix this? What are, yeah. the, what are the strategies that I can? So I think, yeah, 300 people, 300, even 300 people giving opinions. Ain't gonna exactly. Happen. And this is the problem with youth today. They're always on these platforms. They're always looking at what other people are doing, always worrying about what other people are thinking. You see, back in our day, and I'm, Vahid, I'd be, you'd be the same, we had a life before the mobile phone. We had a life before this social media platform. So there was maybe, maybe 10 people around you speaking into your life and doing things. You know, Now it's hundreds. 
Now it's like, oh, I've got to worry about what 100 people are thinking about me. So it's a very different ballgame now. And on that apology, um, you know, everybody can say, I'm sorry. A true apology is when we change our actions or our behaviors, right? So if I say to you, oh, man, sorry, I'm late, man. And every time I'm late, oh, sorry, bro, I won't do that. Well, am I really sorry? Do I really value our friendship as highly as I would somebody else that I'm not running late to? You know, so it's through our actions and our behaviors. And that's probably another big thing that we, because of the, mo I know I blame the mobile phone a lot. You should hear me in our workshops, man. But uh, they have brought some, they have brought some great things. Don't get me wrong. But what it's allowed us to do, man, it's many things. I'll talk about one is the ability to stop being punctual. Now, what do I mean by that? Most people overlook punctuality like it's nothing. But what it's actually doing is two things. Number one, it's embedding on myself that I can be late. And then it's embedding on my friend or whoever I'm going to meet that I can be late. Because why? Because back in my day, if I told you I'm going to meet you down at the, you know, the, the, the shopping center at Maya at 4 o'clock, bro, and you weren't there at 4 o'clock, I'm out. I might wait for you maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, this guy's not coming. And I go. Or, I can't or ring or you and go, bro. Days, if that would have happened, you weren't there. I was like, okay, he got a car. He got into a car accident. Yeah. Mom yeah. killed him. He, 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 yeah. you know, he was grounded. Daddy didn't let him come. So many different things. I actually 100%. would get worried. And I'm like, get me to the closest pay phone. He better pay find phone. the homie because he's never late. And if he's late, exactly. some shit is wrong. wrong. Let's go find out what's up. We'll get the whole track. Yeah. And listen, we'll make it a whole week project. And this will be yeah. a topic. Why so-and-so effed up <laughs> and couldn't get on time. So uh, exactly. listen, I'm, when can we go back to that shit? When can, can we make a village that we go back to that? Because I want to be part of that village. You know, this is funny that you say that, bro, because guess what I hear? I teach a lot of young people about technology and about the impact it has on the brain. One interview in particular that I talk about is when Steve Jobs released the iPad and the, and the journalist asked him, said to him um, just on the fly, oh, your kids must love this. Do you know what he said, Bahid? He, he, he probably said that I don't let my kids use it. That's right. <laughs> That's Why do you think he said that, man? He Rest knew what's peace, up. Steve Jobs. He knew. They know the impact this technology has on the developing brain in particular. I mean, it's one thing as adults, we waste 30, 40, 50 hours on this thing. But as a child... Sam, listen, my daughter knows the difference. She's 16 yeah. months old. Since five months ago, she knew the difference between iPhone and Samsung. My no. wife has got that button in the middle. Mine doesn't have that. She knows oh. the difference. Wow. She already knows. So that's, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> we'll, I I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I, am gonna, I will definitely, this one, I will know about. She's going to let me know, right? But yeah, that's what it is. Now, I'm not against technology, but no. at the end of the day, I feel that as a human race, we are obligated, and the older we are, there are more responsibility on our shoulder to be able yeah. to make sure that we leave this world better than we found it. Amen. Give Amen. Back to the humankind versus just yeah. be a go getter. What about yeah. go giving? 100%. See, this is what we're taught. We're taught to be go getters. We're taught to be go getters. But go giving is the key. You know better than anyone. When you give, how much better does it feel? It's a, it's a bit of a selfish act. There's, there is some selfishness in it to give, but it feels so much better to give to somebody, to give to help them than it does to receive. Oh, right? anybody so that gives any money to a homeless man. We should be training go givers. Anybody that gives any money to a homeless man, they give it because of the, because of the they're buying that feeling. Yeah. Literally, yes. you give yes. dollar, five bucks, whatever it is. Yes. The prices yes. are going up as yes. the economy inflation well, goes up. But that's what that's I That's what Jesus says. Jesus says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is giving. What that means is don't give for that. 
You give without almost your other, any part of your body knowing. That's an unconditional give. I'm not going to, like, I, I did see this beautiful video the other day where somebody, a man, he was an African man, and he saw two homeless guys on the street sleeping, two brothers, actually. And he said, you hungry? And they said, yeah. So he went to the shop, bought them so much, okay? Gave them this, and they were just, like, elated over the moon. It was beautiful, man. Made me cry. I kid you not. But then you go read the comments, bro. And then you hear all these people giving him shit. Oh, why'd you have to film her? Oh, you know, he didn't film his face once. He didn't go, hey, look at me, like some of these young people would do, you know. He was just had the camera on him here. And he was, so whether they knew they were being recorded or not, I don't even know. But it's not like he was going, hey, check me out, you know. But he was doing it to inspire others. It inspired me, man. Like I literally, the next day, I was looking for... I mean, there's lots of homeless everywhere, right? And I was literally looking for them, like, what can I do for them, you know? That's what it inspires. And that's what I think technology can do, and that's its use, right? That's but what listen, the technology did its job. It pulled that. 100%. Listen, listen, listen. A good man is going to do good. A bad right. man is going to do a bad. He's just, uh -huh. listen, a good, the person who needs, you were meant to see that message and help other yeah. people to the extent yeah. that you can. To the extent yeah. that you can, and you have the power. The other people, yeah. it's just a bunch of noise, man. Like, yeah, I, I just completely block those things. And listen, I get that all the time on the comments. I just refuse to engage with it. I there just you don't go. Really engage. I know it's See, there. this brings you back to the first thing we were talking about, right? You know? Yeah, you should have brought shit. us back. That's yeah, it. So there, are, there are things you give a shit about and then there's other things that if they're not there to constructively criticize you, to help you move forward, then that's where you're like, because no problem, Sam, thank Sam, you. The same person who put that stupid comment could have sent yeah. a direct message saying, hey, exactly. brother, did you do that because of this, because of that? If you did because of selfishness, it's cool, do it, yeah. no problem. But hey, yeah. I got a plan. Why can't we do exactly. it together? And then we don't put our faces in there. And we video them. And why don't we make a community? Why don't we make a tribe that every two yeah. weeks we go donate fifty we do bucks? That, that could yeah. be a direct message where it could have yeah, done a 100%. lot more versus putting a comment and just going on a negative rampage. So Definitely. that to me is like, listen, that's the fastest way you get blocked on my on my Instagram. I'm just yeah. blocking you. That's it. We don't need yeah. that negativity. Nah. Listen, the world is already. As negative as it could get. I don't need you to add more to it. 100%. I'm already man, dealing pretty... with enough shit. I don't need you yeah. to pile up on it. I'm trying to. I've been praying for you, man. Like this, uh, it's, I mean, we, I don't get into the news much at all, but obviously social media feeds are filled with stuff. And uh, so we're praying for you guys over there. It looks, it looks pretty crazy. Uh, um, yeah, I know change is needed, but is it needed the way some people over there are doing it? Um, I don't know, man. It looks pretty crazy from here. So prayers are with you, man. No, definitely. It's, it's The news makes it a little bit more worse than what it is, but we can't Always. deny that any country on this planet, uh, you know, you try to put a bunch of people together, you're going to have conflicts. You're going to have mm. racism. You're going to have mm. sexism. You're going to have mm. stupid comments, stupid stuff. You know, I, I was telling one of my buddies, you know, cops pull me over all the time with my Hummer yeah. because they knew. I'm Persian. I got the money. I could afford the ticket. They would pull me over. I paid the ticket. And I knew it. You're not going to pull anybody because of a cracked taillight. That is not violating anybody's right. That is not yeah. causing accidents. That's not doing yeah. any of that shit. I know why they pulled me over. I was cool with it. But you know what? I didn't create that negative energy towards them. I just yeah. said, you know what? I am blessed that I can yeah. make good money and pay yeah. these tickets where I don't need yeah. to be involved with them and worry about it. 700 Amen. bucks, 1,000 bucks, no problem. Here's the ticket. Thank you very much. Once a year, I look at it as taxation. I'm cool yeah. with it. Just add it to my taxes. It's 1,000 mm. bucks I got to pay. But mm. if you want to get really like that, we could talk about racial profiling all day long. In my neighborhood, I could get a 1,000 petitions signed from yeah. people that drive good cars that keep yeah. getting pulled over for stupid yeah. shit. That okay. we never complain, we never go to court, we just show up, pay the damn ticket, and buy. That's it. Yeah. Right. I can get you a right. thousand people in my neighborhood 
that yes. will sign that petition and they will yeah. tell you about all these crazy that we never get engaged with the cops we don't cuss them out we're not disrespectful we just know they got quotas for tickets they're yeah. going to rather give it to us versus they got to go into the black neighborhood they're going to worry about getting shot at so they give it to the rich folks and their department keeps going up and i can talk right. about all the police stations i welcome them i welcome the police station whatever officer they want to come whatever sergeant bring their asses and let's talk about it i got mm. documentations that i got pulled over in the same block three times in one year and i'm like the cops are nowhere else they're just worried about me doing this <laughs> little <laughs> where yeah. they're so minor that you laugh i was over 8 miles i was speeding 8 miles over the speed limit on yeah. a downhill on a downhill hill That's where they hide, man. Like you got to be Do they shaving. do laser guns? <laughs> do laser guns? No, there? no, no, no laser gun. No laser. Just by them calculating and saying you went over. No laser gun no. never. Happened. So eight Stop months. It. Like, Is that how they do it in America? Is going to put people in danger? Really? You know, wow. it's it's very retarded. Eight miles. So maybe they speed mm. it. But listen, to me is this. I laugh it off. I go to work, mm. do what I got to do. This in 20 years will not have any effect in my life. Not any. Probably in 20 years I won't even remember the damn thing. You won't even remember it, man. Listen, no. I t I just talk about this the other day. So, we used to be a group of Lebanese. I'm Lebanese, right? So, we used to be a group of Lebanese kids, always running mucks, always starting trouble. But on the odd occasion where we were just standing around in a group of 20, police would come up to us and tell us to move on and split up. They call it loitering, okay? I would point over to the group of Aussie kids, you know, white kids, same group. And I would say, why aren't you picking on them? That's now, maybe we weren't doing anything then, but we had done many times. So in a police's mind, I said, man, if I was a police, maybe I would be racist too. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because in my mind, is it only just that I think, oh, because he's Arab, he's going to be trouble? No, but it's through my experiences that I have come across when I see a group of 20 young Arab alcohol-fueled males as opposed to 20 young Aussie males, the likelihood that these guys are going to cause more trouble than these guys through my own experience is 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 right does that make sense well wouldn't you agree that with more self-development and more yes. awareness we could that eliminate that because if that all the, the cops key. or all of these officers would go through yeah. a higher level of self-awareness and we got to enable the, them i don't blame them the problem they can, yeah, they're, nah. they're not going through enough training for them to they, 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 and they're not right. getting paid enough for them to no. want to do self-development. Who's going to want to do that? Who's going to want to do that job, so number one? Like number two, they want to talk about them. defunding the police. Now, I know we've gone off topic, but whilst we're here, defunding the police is probably the worst thing I've ever heard. It's a retarded, stupid idea. You actually want to fund the police more to equip them, number one, with better training, number two, with better quality police men and women because you think about it the price the money that they're getting paid the job what it entails who the heck wants to do that bro i can tell you the sort of level of people that are coming for those jobs the ones that are like, either there's two the ones that are really there to serve the country and help the people and the ones that have been probably bullied at school had a rough time and want to sense some form of power over others we see it all the time man it's like it's typical hollywood 101 right this is the problem. So in order to have that, to serve the community better, number one, let's train them better. Let's fund them better. And you know what? Let's, mate, when I, you know when I was always negative in the police? I used to get racially vilified all the time. But it was when I was doing the most wrong. Man, I used to do a lot of wrong, man. Even just driving offences. I got disqualified from my licence. Since I was 16, I'm now 38, 39, 16 times. 
they disqualified my license 16 times in 17, 18 years of driving because it's been a while since I've, that's happened, right? And I would always blame who? Them. They were always, you know, picking on me. They were always doing this. They were always doing that. When we learn to be accountable in some way, shape, or form, and then, mate, like you said, when I get pulled over, nothing but love. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for what you're doing here. So in my mind, I changed the way that I'm paying a ticket, and now I'm paying towards helping community. The old me used to go, oh, yeah, you're just buying this and that. What are they buying? They're just equipping themselves and training themselves better. That's how i got to look at it. So, No, yeah. I agree. Listen, it's just perspective. But keep in mind, that's why mentorship is very important. That's why having a coach is important. That's why having a yeah. good center of influence is important. That's why Definitely. empowering the communities is important. Having the stupid thinking go rich book in middle schools will help a lot of us get the right yeah. mindset. Eight dollars. I I listen, with the amount of money I paid in tickets, they could have they could have provided a couple of schools with a lot of books. So I know I paid the money. So, and, and it's free, you know, you can download it online. But to me, it's like, what can I do to help? I don't want to be the, the cause of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. So I'm asking that question. Hey, what do we need mm. to do? Anybody's got good ideas? Bring it. Let's mm. implement mm. it. Let's, imp let's do something. It could be yeah. doing the wrong thing too. And then five years later, we're like, listen, we need to upgrade this. We need to change it. We need to modify it. I'm yeah. okay with that. But at least let's take some action. Let's do yeah. something. Let's not just sit here on our asses yeah. and just talk about it. Let's 100%. do something. What do we need 100%. to do? They say, knowledge, they say knowledge is power over head, right? This is a misconception. Knowledge Apply. is not power. And no, applied knowledge is power. And then Jim Quick, he says it best. He says, if applied knowledge is power and knowledge is potential power, then learning must be our superpower right? Our ability to learn, that's our superpower. The problem is when we go to school, and I go to schools all the time, well, they don't teach us how to learn. They teach us what to learn. And often the what to learn is not is for a curriculum. It's not to benefit our life in almost any way, shape or form. It's almost just the structure of learning and having to sit down. You know, schools were actually designed for, for factory work, okay? 200 years ago, they were designed to create factory workers. That's why everybody sits in line, you put up your hand, you have these breaks, right? It's, it, it, out of everything that has evolved over the past 200 years, schools would be almost exactly the same, except now instead of blackboards, they have smart whiteboards um, and maybe, yeah, maybe some different subjects. That's it. Nothing else has changed. So that's what we've got to start looking at, you know. Um, and I know in America, I mean, we'll talk about funding. That's probably lacking funding big time is your education. So you've got police that are undervalued, underpaid, under-equipped. Then you've got teachers that are undervalued, underpaid, under-equipped. And then you want to create some amazing society? How? It's Come not going to happen. It's not no. going to happen. No. You're setting yourself up for failure. That's just yeah. like, listen, I can't even, with my low IQ, I can't even figure that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it. So, Brother Sam, how do people find you? Mate, uh, we, so we, we roll around on Instagram a lot. It's just become my, my probably favorite platform. Facebook, I still play a little bit there. Snapchat and the other stuff, I don't really do that, man. I'm not really a social media guy. But because the kids always like, you know, hit me up on Insta, then I do that. So, sec seed on Instagram it's about seeking, empowering knowledge. And it's about planting the seeds to grow the future. That's what it's about, growing future generations, inspiring and empowering the young people to reach their full potential. So, yeah, I'm on Insta, man. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate you having me on. It's been a, been a pleasure. It's been great chatting with you. And, uh, yeah, we'll do it soon, I'm sure. Definitely. Stay in touch. Stay safe. We'll talk soon. Hopefully we can collaborate. Thank you, brother. You got it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. See you, mate.